Hello and welcome back to the PHP 101 series. Uh, we are in the third object-oriented programming video and what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk more about uh, constructing an object or instantiating an object and then we're going to talk about uh, how to access properties within the object. So let's get going here. Um, the first thing that I want to do is uh, line back up my Every time I start the recorder, my browser moves. You guys probably already know that by now. And I should know that by now. But it confuses me every time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this file here that we were working on in the last video because I don't want to lose that. And I'm just going to, because uh, we're going to continue on with the same class house, we're just going to do different things with it. But I want to leave this as reference. Uh, so what I'm going to do in this one is we're going to call this um, instantiate. All right, so now I have this file. I'm going to close the other one. And I'm going to go ahead and go to that file. So it was instantiate. Oops, I had an extra T there. All right, so we got the same file. And uh, instantiate uh, comes from the word of instance. So think of instance. So we're creating or initializing an instance. That's where the word instantiate comes from. And what we're creating an instance of is a house in this particular uh, thing we're creating a house now let's say that um, I wanted more control or I wanted to create these with variables so I didn't want every house I built uh, just starting out to have you know a red a red color door and the temp 65 degrees or maybe we'll keep that but I might want to change the the address will definitely be different and the door color would be different and um, we'll just leave those two things that I, I want to actually have those be unique um, without having to change those once they're created I just want to uh, when I instantiate or when I create an instance of a house I want to be able to set those and the way that we do that is inside of our house uh, class we create a constructor and a constructor looks like this you just say public function and then you you use two underscores and then put the word construct open and close some parentheses and then uh, go ahead and give it some closing opening and closing curly braces and then what we can do is give parameters to this constructor so the first param I want to do is address the second param I want to do is door color okay and so now when I instantiate a new class just like new house here uh, like that and just to make this well we'll leave this uh, public function heat for now but what I wanted to show you was instead of saying new house and open and closing those uh, empty parens this is just like a function now that we have to pass these parameters because we didn't give them default values let me go ahead now and um, let's see let's get rid of some of these echoes and this I just want to kind of take away some of this code and um, so the first house let's say we're gonna build the first house at 123 Main Street alright and it's going to have a green door okay so now if I just let me comment out this house too if we go and we var dump house one we get this object is still a house the internal temperature is 65 the door color is red and that is because we didn't actually do the work in the constructor yet but this is how you do it you instantiate it by using the new keyword and then you give it the parameters that are passed down the construct method now the reason this didn't actually do anything is because we actually have to change these parameters inside the class and the way we do that is we access it via this okay so you type dollar sign and then this and then you use uh, a skinny arrow which is just a dash and then a greater than sign and then you put the name of the property so in this instance it's going to be address okay so you say this address equals and then we're gonna say address okay so this gets passed in the constructor 
And then what it's going to do is it's going to set this address, which is this property. When you say this, uh, you're referring to the object that's being built from this class. Okay, It's not this actual class, but you're referring to the property of that class. And so what you do is you say this address is equal to address. And so whatever we pass into this here will get set to the address property. The next thing we have to do here is just we have to set this uh, and then door color equal to door color. We save that and I'm, I apologize for the background noise. I'm at my house and got some kids running around out there so if you can hear that I apologize. But I'm going to refresh now. Alright, so I'm pretty silly. I have a typo here, and inside the construct, it's actually spelled like that. So it's C O N S T R U C T. I don't know how I missed that, but construct. Okay, now when we actually run this, what's going to happen is the construct will run. Uh, this is what's called a ma magic method. Make sure that you have the two underscores. That's two underscores, not one. Uh, and then if you refresh here, you can see now that when we var dump house one, its door color is green, and now it has an address of 123 Main Street. So, again, just to recap, when you instantiate, you can if you want, and you don't have to, but if you create this construct method, you can pass in parameters to the instantiation. So you say new house, and when you do that, it runs this magic method called construct, and in our case, what we wanted to do is set up these uh, properties of address and door color. So now when we instantiate every instance of this house, they can all have different do door colors and addresses. Okay, so let's just um, do that with house 2. Let's say this is located at 456 2nd Street. And it's got a door color, it's just tan. Okay. So now if I go down here, and I'm just going to uh, copy and paste this, and instead of var dumping house uh, 1, we're going to var dump house 2. Refresh. So now we have two houses. We have house 1 and house 2. And although they were created from the same class, they have different door colors and addresses, so their properties are independent of one another. So I can change the property inside of house 1 without affecting house 2 at all. And this is what's beautiful about object-oriented programming. This is a self-contained uh, set of data and methods or functions to do things within that. So let me show you really quickly how we can access these properties. So we kind of touched on it with the this keyword. Just know that anytime you, you use the word this, you're referring to the object that this creates. So you're setting this object's address property equal to the address that's passed into the instantiation. I know I've said that a few times, but I just want to make sure you understand that. So in order for us to, um, let's go ahead now and uh, uh, show you how to access these properties. So what I want to do is down here, I'm going to use some HTML here. And I'm going to put an H3 tag, and I'm going to say house1 is located at, okay, now what I can do right here is we can open up some PHP tags and just go ahead and access the variable, so house1, that's that object, and then if I want to use its address, you use the skinny arrow and then the word address. And then we'll go ahead and close those PHP tags. So house one is located at, okay? And then what we can do is do another sentence and say, it has a, and then again, we will, um, well, the other thing too is we have to use the echo thing to echo it. Um, and I'll show you a shortcut later on this, but so we can say it has, open and close your PHP tags, a echo, and then you access house one and then use the skinny arrow and now we're going to say door color okay we'll close that so now let's go ahead and refresh the page and see what we got 
So now you can see in the browser it says House 1 is located at 123 Main Street. It has a green, and then we got to finish that sentence there, it has a green door. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to change this here to street just to make this look a little nicer. Okay, so if I refresh now, House 1 is located at 123 Main Street. It has a green door. So you can see the House 1 up here, green door, 123 Main Street. These are properties, guys. Okay, the next thing I'll do, I'm just going to duplicate this line, this whole line here and paste it here and we'll say house 2 is located at house 2 address and um, it has a house 2 door color okay so let's now refresh and we can see that house 2 is located at 456 second street and it has a tan door okay so that is accessing a property um, Anytime you access a property, you use the skinny arrow after the name of the object. So this object is house one, and that's in memory, and I can access that and use it anytime I want. So in this video, I uh, just want to recap real quick. Um, what we've done is um, we have um, we have instantiated uh, two objects from our one class our one house class and we've used the magic construct method to pass in parameters so that when this is being constructed we can say hey I want this address to be this and I want the door to be this as it's being constructed once it's constructed we can it gets stored in memory uh, and then we can access that later we can either var dump it or we can do things with it like echo out properties to the screen so in this case, we accessed, we echoed house one address, and you access that by using the skinny arrow. The other thing that we talked a little bit about in this video is um, the keyword this, which is how you always reference um, when, when you're inside of a class, you're referencing an object that will be created from this class, okay? Because we don't know what this object is going to be called. We can't do this. We can't say house one address because it hasn't been created yet and we don't know what we're going to call that so we they give us um, a reserved word called this so no matter what we call this this address refers to um, this instance of the house while we're instantiating it and even once it's instantiated okay so we're going to continue on in the next video we're going to talk a little bit more about methods and how to uh, manipulate this these properties with methods inside of an object. All right, so I would hope to see you guys in the next video. Uh, if you feel like this has all made sense to you, feel free to move on. If it doesn't make sense to you, rewatch it. Go back and watch a couple of the other uh, object-oriented programming videos, and don't move on until you get each concept. We're going to do take this in baby steps, and I don't care how many videos this takes. One baby step, then another baby step, and then eventually you're going to have a pretty good understanding of object-oriented programming. All right, I'll see you in the next video, guys. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and hit that bell notification so that you are notified when I release new videos. Talk to you soon.